coming up. What an excellent day for glasses. Well, howdy folks, and welcome to Minute 56 of The Exorcist Minute, a show where we endeavor to examine, extrapolate, and excavate The Exorcist minute by terrifying minute. My name is Lester Ryan Clark. And I'm Keenan Diaz. And we'll be your holy guides on this journey through what some have called the scariest movie of all time. Okay, so our minute begins with Dr. Tanny saying, same principle, I mean. And it ends with Dr. Tanny saying, now, what we missed in the EEG. Yes, this minute is a whole lot of Tanny talk. Teeny tiny Tanny talk. Uh, or is that is that our new talk show? It's like, and now back to Tanny talk, right? And he just like brings guests on and he doesn't listen to them, right? Like, and here's, here, <laughs> here's our next guest, Chris McNeil. She says her daughter's bed is shaking. No, no, doctor, I said. So we prescribed the bed some Ritalin and uh, now please enjoy the comedy stylings of our returning guest, Uncle Tito. You know, it's really funny. <laughs> And musical guest, <laughs> Gustav Penderecki. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's uh, Tanny. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was a here's <laughs> Tanny. <laughs> and it's just he just he just walks out of two gigantic enormous reflective glasses <laughs> <laughs> right and there's the studio audience but they're behind several panes of glass right and they can't quite yeah and 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 on their side it's just it just no, it's just medical machine noise right <laughs> 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 oh boy okay but <laughs> well you you were calling him teeny tiny tanny right now, okay, we said before that Dr. Tanny is is uh, almost certainly named after a colleague of uh, William Peter uh, William Peter Blatty's. Correct. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, or at least at least somebody who helped him in the research of uh, writing the book. Right. He's in the acknowledgments. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did try to look because, as you have said before, Dr. Klein is uh, Dr. Little or Dr. Small. Oh, right. Yeah. Eine kleine Nacht to music. Right. Klein um, means small in German. Yeah. Klein means small. And I was looking. Well, what does Tanny mean? So this is we know why probably why Dr. Tanny got his name, why it changed from the book, from whatever it was before to Dr. Tanny here. Right. Um, but Dr. Tanny doesn't have a a, a definite definition in English, hmm. but it is potentially based off of an Irish name, oh. which does mean slim. <gasps> Interesting. So I don't know how to say this Gaelic. Um, so it's T-A-N-I-A-D-H, which okay. is Gaelic for thin. Okay. So D- Tanny, uh, Tanny is thin or slim, and <laughs> Klein is little or small. Interesting. So we got we got like, and and this all just kind of like commenting on um, their, I guess their their chances of finding anything or solving the problem, <laughs> right? Like you could say it's yeah. slim to none. It's you know, it's like we we have small hope here, you know. Slim decline. Right? Slim, slim decline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So again, you know, um, the 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 uh, high school sophomores question about are you just reading too much into it? You're just making this stuff up. That you know, regardless, we have two doctors who are named um, named after teeny tiny men. Yes, yes right. Right, right. Yeah, teeny whether tiny. Whether it's intentional like or not. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Right. So, you know, same thing, same principle, I mean. Um, <laughs> but no, and, and yes, we know that, you know, Dr. Tanny most likely got uh, his name from um, the real Dr. Tanny who helped William Peter Blatty out, right? And, you know, in real life, there's, you know, <laughs> people don't go walking around. They're not walking metaphors, you know. Um, right, exactly. You know, it's like so. Uh, but yeah, but it's it's just yeah, fun people, to think of. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. People name Hunter, you name your child Hunter, or they never pick up a gun or a bow in their lives. That's okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't have to get mad at them. Hunter, what are you doing? I named you Hunter. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I named you Doctor. (laughs) And what, yeah, what are you just, you're just a lawyer? (laughs) What a disappointment. Get out of my house. (laughs) Right. And then, of course, there are these English names that we don't, we don't, last names I'm talking about, where we we just, we're blind to them, right? Mm -hmm. That we have a, our friend whose name is Nick Baker, and we don't think like, oh, well, you know, that, that means somewhere in his uh in his genealogy there was someone who made bread like we don't even think about that right 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 it's so far removed that we don't even think of it anymore right if you were hunter taylor which i'm sure there's a billion hunter Mm -hmm. tailors out there right Right, we don't think like oh you should be shooting things and you should be fixing clothes or else you are a disappointment hunter yes coming from the long line of hunter taylor soldier spy (laughs) 
<laughs> oh yeah, and if if anyone ever wants to change their last name to Gatherer, they could be the you Hunter go. Gatherers. Then you have then you can start a whole new civilization, <laughs> Mister Hunter, Mrs. Gatherer, or hey, right. Mrs. Hunter, Mister Gatherer. You know, hey, hey, Mrs. Mrs. Hunter, Mrs. Gatherer. Well, Lester, there, it's there you go. Right? We got to we got to be right, <laughs> Mister Hunter, Mister Gatherer. Right? Like could be could be just oh, could just could be Hunter and Gatherer. That's right. Could be anything. Could be, hey, could be hunter, gatherer, gatherer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or maybe maybe relationships aren't for you. You could just be gatherer. Yeah. Huh. You're you're better on your on your own. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You you know, you, you take care of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got our doctors. Yeah. Oh no, no. They, I, okay. So oh, you one, got some more? Yes. <laughs> Great. Give the people what they want, Lester. Yes, yes. Distraction. <laughs> Somebody, somebody told me, and I don't know, I don't know how uh, accurate this is, but there's a reason that um, we have names connected to colors. Only some colors, but not all colors, oh, right? Right. Uh-huh. Like you know, like if if you're white, then you, or if your last name is white, you could mm-hmm. have been, like, you could have had like a silversmith in your oh, in your background, okay. right? If you're if you're uh, if your name is black, then it could be you have a blacksmith, right? So oh, black and white. Uh-huh. So so a blacksmith or a silversmith, right? Green. You are you uh, you had a coppersmith in your in your. Oh, uh, yeah. it's all about smiths, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And but then that's why we don't have like red or purple or or any of those because right. those don't like necessarily relate to uh professions at the time when they were like all right you're a blacksmith your name is mr black all gotcha. right you're a silversmith your name is mr white right i've met a couple of blues really and then, yes just one or two but i don't know you know people change their names I, so i don't know where the name came from right and hmm. and then red is usually r-e-d-d which is probably not the same thing as the which color, is not yeah right? probably not the right. color yeah oh, oh, that's really so green so white green and black that's all the same so what about mm-hmm. brown brown i would imagine oh oh uh leatherworking oh okay all right so it's all just about jobs again mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh that's mm-hmm. sad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nothing because about your personality of, nothing about right. what you like because of feudalism yeah mm-hmm. yeah you're just stuck with that for the rest of your genealogy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so okay. if you're if you're dr brown mm-hmm. then you know you're you know your your family is uh you know uh branching out Oh yeah, you're moving up. Yeah, right. Yeah, it went from. I mean, well, no, I mean, they're you know, leather working is is a respectable uh, uh, job as well, and I'm sure leather workers would. You know. Sure, tell that to your parents. So. Yeah, you know, I'm just, <laughs> mom. <laughs> look at this shoe I made. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, that's, I can't make a shoe, mm-hmm. <laughs> but sure, I'm sure that you know my my mom, who sometimes listens. You know, the, the one thing whenever I would get a job or move on to a job, she would mm-hmm. just ask, "Does it have health insurance?" So she was ah, happy yeah. as long as it had health insurance. And that's why you go with doctor every time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so getting getting back to the top of this minute, we got uh, Tanny talking and we got Chris listening. And I like the pose that she's in. She's sort of um, hugging herself, but then she's got her hand up mm. over her mouth. It's it's very much like a com- uh, comforting, self soothing pose we got here. And and she needs a little yeah. comfort. You can see you can see her face is pale. Her eyes are red rimmed. Um, she's you know starting to look a little Captain Howdy ish herself. Yes, um, definitely. And and it's so weird what our camera is doing here by like hiding behind uh, Dr. Tanny's arm. It like diminishes her in this weird way. She's sort of like swallowed up by his shape. Yeah, we we might call this dirty. So when it is, um, we have over the shoulders, you know, so it'll be, uh, if we have Chris, but we're sort of feeling a little bit of Dr. Tanny's shoulder, we would call that an over the shoulder. Mm. And, but this is, this is incredibly large, right? This is yeah. a very atypical where even his, his like elbow is bigger than her entire body. Right. right. So it's gigantic yeah. yeah and she's she's sitting there and she looks small she looks mm-hmm. weak she's um as you say like soothing herself or self-stimulating herself like that poor example of the uh, the shrew who gets cornered and ends up you know uh, grooming themselves with right. rather than running away or fighting back right right and i like i was i was thinking it's like boy like how how did this happen so fast literally mm-hmm. just just in the last minute we were we were making jokes about teeny tiny tanny and how how chris was the one with the power even though like her voice was you know quavering just like mm-hmm. the you know but the way that she was standing the way that she was holding herself and holding the gazes of the doctors told us that she was in control she was mm-hmm. you know like you said keenan like even blocking them from leaving the house <laughs> and you know the docs looked uh, like no more than like two little boys who now had to explain themselves to mom and but right. it's like it's flipped now suddenly now like you know talk about how she holds herself she's literally holding herself and she's in this like like we say diminished position mm-hmm. and teeny tiny tanny has grown so huge that he no longer fits on the screen 
Like what happened? Like, <laughs> right. Like, 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 like what happened in the span of a single minute to where our our roles seem like completely reversed now? Oh, she she needs them still, right? Mm-hmm, like that's mm-hmm. the sad thing about what's going on here is that she's so done with them, but she needs them. There's there's no other option. Right. She they are her only hope, right? And and like we said, it, like they are they are small and slim, right? Like that's that's mm-hmm. the hope that she's clinging to. Right. right. And it's um, I mean, we're going to get to this, but but it does feel like in this world that she can't go to, say, other medical professionals without them. There's mm. something about that. Right. Like like she wants to take them to a psych, uh, take Reagan to a psychiatrist. But right. but they seem to be able to block her from that. Right? Yeah. Isn't that sort of what, what's going on here? That's what I was wondering. I was I was very curious. And it's it comes up a little later in my notes as to why she just can't be like, well, F off and I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get a second opinion. It's like right. it's like somehow they're keeping her from that. I know it feels like that a lot. Right. So whether that's lot. So that's sort of my question is like, is that the is that the facts of what it was to be a sing, you know, single mother in this world? Was that you had to have your doctor refer you to somebody? Um, I'm not sure, but but certainly it's felt that way before, right? Mm-hmm. Like like we understand going to a doctor. I mean, and nowadays the the insurance system is so crazy. This isn't a this isn't a medical um, you know an insurance policy show, <laughs> but the idea that you have to go and get a referral nowadays, you have to go to your GP, your general practitioner, to get a referral. Um, even if you know you know the doctor that you're getting the referral to, right? You like right, even if right. you already have a relationship with them, you need to go to your GP sometimes. Yeah. Um, and but if you don't have a GP, then you can't go to you know an, an ENT or anything like that. It's, right. And right. it feels labyrinthine, and it feels like you're stuck and you're reliant on these people. Um, mm-hmm. And not and even get, for the medical part. You get who part. you get. It's like right. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, it's not even for the medical part. It's for the bureaucratic part, or maybe right. in Chris's case, like the power, the power part. Right. Right. And. I, like I was, I was trying to think, um, like for reasons she can't, uh, you know, just kind of like you know pull up roots and and mm-hmm. uh, you know take her take her daughter elsewhere. Mm-hmm. There, there is going to be a reason later on where mm-hmm. she has to like keep this as as contained as possible. She can't tell anybody else, but that hasn't happened yet. So, like, yeah, it, it, like it is, it is kind of um, uh, a little bit confusing here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, as is evidenced in this minute, like visually, right? They the doctors are growing larger. They've they've almost kind of got uh they you know, we're talking about um Chris uh trapping them in her own house. Like it's almost like she's trapped now, right? Mm-hmm. Um and I'll tell you what I think. I like I, mm. I, I think you were right back in in the last minute. Like you had said that Chris desperately wants to uh believe them. And I mm. think that is the like the one and only reason she is she is handing over control to these doctors is is that she does not know what to do and it appears as if they know and right now that is the only option the only hope that she has um so of course she's going to take it right not right. to mention the fact that you know it's it's for her daughter right like you you really feel like this is this is a power dynamic that only exists because of some very specific key factors right mm-hmm. one it's for her daughter right so of course she's going to do what's best for her and she's going to do everything that she can. Two, it's a field that she has no experience with and three, she's she literally has no one else, right? And mm-hmm. and first and somehow they have they have like barred her from seeking other medical professionals at, like at, at this time. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, now it's sort of um now I'm sort of picking apart how some of this really works well. The idea that that Chris is in a new city, like it makes sense why that's happening now mm. to me, right? Um, and we're gonna we're gonna highlight that in in the coming minutes of Doctor Klein, right? right? Like, yeah, she doesn't she doesn't. Um, well, I, I don't want to sort of jump ahead, but she she can't go back to her home right now, which right. is something that that's very interesting. So that's when, yeah, and and uh, you know, folks, you'll remember Klein is not her normal doctor. Uh, right. uh, her normal doctor referred her to Klein, um, mm-hmm. and she was she was actually even like willing to get her LA doctor like out here to mm-hmm. uh, uh, to look at Reagan, but uh, that wasn't right. a. Uh, a possibility, right? Right. But yeah, so like all of these factors, all of these factors are c- sort of like set in place to make it so that Chris has no other choice. If you take away any of these factors or make it just maybe like even just make it about her rather than her daughter mm-hmm. and you you would see how quickly like she kicks these doctors to the curb, right? She's <laughs> like, it's like, Miss McNeil, have you possibly considered? She's like, get out of my house, right? Like <laughs> just like, just like that, we're done, right? Like Carl, show these gentlemen the door and Carl picks them up like two cats and and like, you know, tosses them out the door, right? Like he, he wouldn't do that with real cats. He Carl right. Carl would actually be like a very loving cat dad, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. Right? It's like, here is your milk, Mr. Mittens, right? You know, just super nice. Yeah. Mr. Mittens, I'm afraid that cats don't dance. <laughs> I didn't even that wasn't even part of the little of the little thing that I was creating. But 
look at that. Look at the organic. Look, it's it's almost like there's a higher power, right? And and an all seeing, all knowing, all organizing being that's just putting all these things together. Look at that. Right. It's all an intricate tapestry. Absolutely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. So like. I feel like with doctors, Carl would be like a little bit more brusque, right? Like you got to be, right? Like you, we got a we got a real stray doctor problem here, right? Right? They're all over the neighborhood. They're feral, right? Like running around, like like with their white lab coats, right? Some sometimes you hear them at night, like you know, fighting with the psychiatrist, and they're like, Shh, right? And it's awful. It's terrible, right? Sustaining themselves on cigarettes and misogyny. Right? They look down at you with their degree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're like, well, I don't know. You know, cat lifespans are so much shorter, but they're, so they're like, I spent five months in cat medical school. They right. Very much. <laughs> That's um, when you got to turn the hose on him. It's like, get out of here. <laughs> I'm a big cat person. You're a cat and a dog person, I suppose. I am. Yes, I had a, yeah. I, I, I had a, a, a two cats and uh, still got a dog. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, we didn't go over this when we were talking about the animal groups because I was like, oh, it's its own sort of thing. But now you brought up this cat, the feral cat population thing. But mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. you know what a feral cat uh, colony is called? Wait, what's that? A clouder. A clouder? Yeah, like chowder, but with an L. So that's what the clouder. That's what the, yeah, clouder. <laughs> say it, say it, Frenchy. Clouder. <laughs> yeah. So they, they, yeah, they live in little colonies and they're clouders, and it's this whole society they form out there. And and I don't think it applies like if they're wild house cats like out in. I think it has to be like um you know in in human areas when wow. they sort of because their whole society changes because they like you know find where they can um you know, get stray food or whatever and, and bring it back there. So they don't even get to be called a pride? Oh, I don't think you so. You would think, like, because that's what lions are. Like, <laughs> so they, you got to call them a clouder? They are wow. definitely a clouder. That's their colony. Oh, see, Oh, I thought, well, I, like, I, 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 it's, I grew up with, you know, Heathcliff. I always thought they would, <laughs> they should be called a gang. <laughs> they certainly are right there. A gang of, of cats, right? Yeah, they're snapping their fingers exactly. as they go down the street. And they, Walking on two feet, just like, yeah. Oh, it's the Jellicles in the, in the, where's the Jellicle chats? Oh, a Jellicle something. Now, oh, have you seen that movie, Cats? By the way, I have not. I've I've seen uh, shots of it, and uh, like, I mean, do you, we have a filmed version of the one with the real people. <laughs> why are we making? Why are we making more? You know, so I won't say that the new Cats is a is a is a bad. It is a, it is a bad movie. I guess I will say, <laughs> <laughs> but it is so interesting and I've only mm. seen it once, but I think about it all the time and I would love to watch it again with an audience like, like, like the room or something like that. I, yeah. I saw it opening weekend and, um, and, you know, I saw it with my buddies and I think at first the whole audience was like, well, you know, I don't really want to be like laughing or jiving at this brand new movie. Cause what are those people in the, in the theater who are there? you know, who are watching it legitimately, you know, right, don't. Right. Um, but so, so part of the experience of watching cats opening weekend was sort of listening to, um, to, you know, sort of, sort of, uh, mapping out in the, the dark theater, like where the groups of people were that they were sitting, you know, with your mind and mm-hmm. then hearing eventually like ticking off, okay, this group is laughing, this group is laughing, this group is laughing. <laughs> so then by the time you've covered everybody, they're like, okay, okay, yeah, we're all here for this. Just jeer at this movie because okay, it's, so, right. it's so incredible. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think I think it's a, a an accidental sort of masterpiece, you know, about uh, that's really? so so watchable. Yeah, I would love to watch it again with a big group like that. It's so entertaining. Okay, um, like a kind of madness that could only exist from people trying their best. Like you couldn't right. you couldn't access, you, you couldn't purposefully make a movie like this. Um, yeah. But yeah, as you've seen some of the uh, the trailers for it, right? Like you watch you <laughs> you watch Tom Hooper's Cats, and and you are disgusted in parts of your physical body you didn't know existed right yeah (laughs) oh what is this what is this (laughs) it's 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 going back to that whole uncanny valley thing right oh oh lester it certainly left the valley far behind this is this is (laughs) guys this is the uncanny valley This is beyond the uncanny valley. Beyond, yeah, I, I would recommend Cats to anybody. I think okay. it is one of the most interesting films you'll ever see. Um, right. Yeah, it, it is. It is just beyond bonkers. Um, so what you're saying is they failed at what they set out to do, mm-hmm. but they accidentally created something 
amazing, incredibly watchable. Yeah, incredibly, incredibly. Yeah, I, there, you know, I would, I would rather watch that than watch Avatar again. I mean, like, wow. you know, like this is a, this is something that's much more fun than watching some of these other things. You know, other, you know, competent films. This will be the thing like that it's remembered for, and it's mm-hmm. not even like like what it was trying to do. Right. That's really interesting. Yeah, and it starts. It starts with that miscalculation, as, as you sort of say. Like these are CG people. They've they've CG out their bodies mm-hmm. instead of just putting them in this really like the most famous thing about the musical cats is the costumes and the makeup. Right. And they're just like, well, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to CGI because that's, that's what CG could do. CG could fix anything and make it great and wonderful. But then why are you keeping the people faces? <laughs> That's another good question. Why aren't they just like like make it look like the Secret Life of Pets or something? And right. Make them okay. Look like so, cartoony cats, right? Right. This is okay. So this is this is this is my take on this whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like the the appeal of Cats the musical mm-hmm. is the spectacle and the like how how well the the costume designers and the makeup mm-hmm. people and the actors and the you know like everybody how well everybody came together to make these people look as close to cats as possible but obviously like they have human noses they have mm-hmm. human eyes and chins and you know facial proportions and everything right. like that right they we can tell they're people right, right. but it's this amazing like uh, like Cirque du Soleil like mm-hmm. like a, a, a new thing right and so you know we turn our brain off and we say okay these are cats but like they don't look like any cats you have ever seen if you right. have a cat like that then <laughs> fucking run um, yeah exactly well but Ju- oh god so but like that's that is that is the the physical limitations of like what we can do mm-hmm. with costumes and makeup right. and we're fine with it yeah. then then you introduce animation and i'm thinking okay then just make them all look like puss in boots Right, which like is just totally do, watchable. Just, it's, just it's, do that, yeah, right? right? Like exactly. I would, I would see like Mr. Mistopheles and mm-hmm. Rum Tum Tugger and and all of those, all of those guys, right? Like looking mm-hmm. like actual cats because now you can just you can you can do that. You can mm-hmm. draw it, right? Right. But they're like, no, let's keep the facial features for some reason. <laughs> like it's it's like they're making like let's make a CG version of people dressed as cats, right? Um, and that, like, why? It goes a little bit beyond that, Lester, when you actually see it. So I'll sit, next time you're in town, I'll sit you down and make okay, okay. But like um, Rebel Wilson is is Jenny Any Dots and she has, you know, she's a big fluffy cat. She's a bigger lady anyways, right? But she's mm-hmm, a big mm-hmm. fluffy cat. And then she she picks up a zipper and unzips her fur and throws it away. And underneath it is another like coat of cat. Wait, wait <laughs> what? <laughs> Obviously, I'm doing the film a disservice by by telling you this in audio form. When you no, 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 no. The story isn't wait like it's it's the story of cats. There's a story of cats. It's like it's based on a book, right? It's like it's like a it's like a book of poems. Yeah, it's a book of poems. T.S. Eliot, right? T.S. Eliot. It's it's which which that okay. T.S. Eliot wasn't writing about people dressed as cats. He was writing about was actual writing about fucking cats. cats right? Absolutely right. <laughs> so, but now, so so then we do a live action performance. We dress people right. up as cats, and that's fine. Right now we're doing an animation, and we got we got this weird kind of like monstrosity of like <laughs> like cat bodies, right? With with people faces for some yeah. reason. But now you're saying that those those people faced cat bodied things. Mm-hmm. Actually, they're also wearing clothes? Sometimes. <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> okay, yeah, I do have to see this. You have I, to see oh, it, yeah. Well, I sometimes am... they're, well, they're wearing, some of them wear clothes, but but Jenny Any Dots, her, she, she unzips her coat, like her, her cat coat. Her skin. Her, her skin, yes. I... <laughs> takes it off and there's another, there's another layer of cat fur and skin underneath it. Okay. All right. So, anyways, we should. Uh, yeah, let's let's move on, let's move on. <laughs> from let's the cats. Like before we become the cats minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the cats minute is just like just us puking <laughs> yeah. between every minute, <laughs> coughing up hairballs. <laughs> okay, one last thing about the movie cats. <laughs> <laughs> so the trailer dropped in for the move for Tom Hooper's Cats, cats uh-huh. in front of the remake uh, of uh, the Lion King, John Favreau's Lion King. Right. And I was sitting next to a family mm-hmm. um, to watch the Lion King. And uh, the cats trailer came on, and afterwards, this little girl says, "Mom, I don't want to see cats." <laughs> and the mom says, "That's okay, honey. We're not going to see cats because if you try to take me, I will not go. It's okay. We're not. I will not go. It's fine. It's fine." <laughs> it made that much of an impression, <laughs> right? 
it was the trailer before The Exorcist. Oh, right. Exactly. It's, it's like, I will not, I would rather see The Exorcist than I see cats. <laughs> My God. Okay, but okay. All right, we're climbing out of the cat trap. <laughs> or no, no, sorry, the cat's trap. Sorry. Oh yes, yes, that's very different. I, Keenan, I now have to find copyright-free music that sounds like the cat's musical. Oh, I'll do it for you. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we got it. <laughs> that close enough that has the tenor of it, but it's not. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I just made up some notes. Nice, cool. All right. Okay, so so back to, to Chris and Tanya and Khan, right? Um, but yeah, it, like it's it's fascinating here how quickly the power dynamic has changed, right? Mm-hmm. That's what we were talking about, right? When when you realize, like like especially that this is this is by Chris's choice. She is she is allowing them to take control mm-hmm. because right now she believes it is the best thing for her daughter. It's the only thing, right? Mm-hmm. So she's she's allowing these two men to stand there and pretend they know what they're talking about because may, maybe they do. And I like what she does here, right? Dr. Tanny gets done telling his story, right? Same principle, right? The, the woman who lifted the car, right? And, and we're still on that first line. And Chris considers him for a second, looks to Klein. I, I, I feel like she trusts Klein a little bit more. They have more of a, a, of a history. And then she looks back to Tanny and she says, so what's wrong with her, right? right? But it's, it's not Tanny who answers. It's Klein. Right. And he says, we still think it's the temporal lobe, um, but we only we only see him for like a second. We can we cut back uh, behind the doctors. It's almost as if it's it's almost as if we're hiding behind them because <laughs> right. now now Chris is mad. Oh, she says, she's, yeah, she's chuffed. Mm-hmm, sure. mm-hmm. Properly chuffed. <laughs> um, and it's just like, what are you talking about for Christ's sake? For an atheist, she says Christ and for Christ's sakes, mm-hmm. like so many times in this. Right. <laughs> um, and, and the lighting here and, and the way that she is glaring at them, it starts out like her expression holds so much content. Mm-hmm. For both of these doctors, so much disdain, right? Uh, the way that her chin is pointed at them in this frown with her – and her eyes are like it, – it's not – it's it's not like unbridled rage or reactionary anger. There's this look of like, how dare you even try temporal lobe again? You disgust me. Right. Like you're you're either you're either lying or you really are that stupid. Mm-hmm. And, like like and and maybe we really are hiding behind Dr. Tanny. We're, we're Captain Howdy, and we're like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then and then she explodes. Right. Like it's this great building up, and and then it comes out in this like. Uh, like what I guess could be viewed as like, uh, I guess you could say like hysterical outburst. Uh-huh. And and perhaps that's why Chris has been holding back this whole time because she knows that in a lot of ways she has to be more calm and more composed than a man because the moment she shows the slightest bit of mm-hmm. anger or it seems like she doesn't have control of her, mo- her, her emotions, mm-hmm. that's when the doctors are going to be like, ah, yes, well, we, you know, we were right all along. Typical, typical case of female hysteria. Yeah, right? that's why we don't, that's why we don't talk to the mothers normally, right? Mm-hmm. We, just, we just do it. We just take the kid away from the mother and just do what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. So, so she's had to keep back and hold in probably a lot of things that she has wanted to say because she knows how the doctors would read it. Mm-hmm. And, and here is where a lot of it comes out. Maybe, maybe. Maybe more than she intended, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it starts out very calculated and then it rises and and that like did you see her or not is like a whip crack that like separates intention and emotion. And uh, like on the other side of those words now, you can see like what uh, what she's saying is affecting her even as she's saying it, right? Mm-hmm. She's, act- she's acting like she's fucking out of her mind. Th- this is probably the first time she's said those words out loud, mm-hmm. right? The things, the thing that she's been fearing, the thing that um, she's like been uh, thinking of about she's finally given words to it right yeah and it's like it's like it's like trying to escape through her hands right she's mm-hmm. not she's not in control of herself she starts gesticulating again yes again wildly you would say mm-hmm. you know, she doesn't want to be this type of person but that's what's happening it's so much stuff to, needs to come out exactly and and her ears are hearing them even mm-hmm. as her mouth is saying them and you can see her body language change as that like realization dawns and and like the first words that came to my mind was uh drowning right mm-hmm. like it's 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 like as as she was talking she got too close to the edge she slipped and she fell into her own thoughts and and you see like her hands mm-hmm. whip out right like you said yeah, right, right. Like, like they were wrapped around her, sort of like holding herself, but now she's like, she's in too deep. And, and so they whip out as if like, she's trying to like uh, swim back up to the, the, the surface. Right. And her express, her expression changes again. Like folks, I know in, in, 
uh, uh, many ways, this has become the Ellen Burstyn minute <laughs> um, where we just talk about how great Ellen Burstyn is. But like, I feel like it is my duty to observe this and report mm-hmm. back to you because I'm watching this and I'm, I'm pausing and I'm, and I'm writing and I'm, I'm, I'm pressing play again and then I'm pausing. And, and even as I'm doing so, like maybe a, a second at a time, not even like, like milliseconds, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing this, like Ellen Burstyn's face and her body and the way that she is standing changes in milliseconds, right? The camera really does see more than our eyes. And you would have to watch this scene in slow motion just to watch every stage of Chris McNeil's grief right here. She is, she is like in control, then she's not. She lashes out, then she tries to swim back up from, you know, the depth of her anger, right? And now suddenly, like if you pause in the middle of this, uh, like it's a completely different scene where she looks like she's about to cry. Now she breaks eye contact with Klein, but like it's not out of weakness. It's more like she's trying to organize her own thoughts even as the words are coming out, right? Her her hands are going up even more again. It, like it, it made me think of drowning, like I right. said, right? Like she's drowning in this realization, drowning in despair. And she looks at Klein again and she says like a, a split personality, right? She mm-hmm. looks at him twice and then she ultimately turns away. It likes, it, it's like she's reaching out to him, but like ultimately she stops and she looks down and I'm curious as to why you think that is, Keenan. Do you think that this is her like catching herself, composing herself in front of these men? Is it her realizing that this kind of reaction is only going to like further cement their idea that, mm-hmm. that that she's hysterical, right? And therefore doesn't like know what she's talking about? Is or is she genuinely sorry for shouting at these doctors at the, after they've been trying to help, right? Because that was like like a very valid reason to shout like like well, all yeah, of, like, but it's embarrassing to fly off the handle sometimes right so it, it, you know it, it, so some of sometimes it's just like i'm sorry i did that i'm sorry that you saw me being myself right, right. <laughs> i'm sorry mm-hmm. that you saw this thing i'm trying to keep from all of you right right and you were talking about um about how you know the camera catches everything and all these different things that ellen burson is doing that's the power of you know modern acting is that the actor doesn't even need to no, and and plan necessarily. I don't. I don't know Ellen Burstyn's again her process well. We don't mm-hmm. have her diary about. Oh, I'm going to try to do this and this and this and this and this in this order. Um, you know, that's the power of modern acting is that if you're just in the moment and you are living under the imaginary circumstances well enough, and you're just experiencing what your character is experiencing, then the, the camera takes care of a lot of that heavy lifting, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. it just sees you vacillating between these. You don't have to necessarily plan them all out. Um, some actors like to say, like, look, on this line, and then this line, I'm going to do this, and this line, I'm going to be looking up, and this line, I'm going to be doing all that stuff, which is completely valid. And other actors don't. They just are, are listening and thinking in the moment, and they're not in control of themselves, and they're allowing themselves to be photographed out of control. Exactly. And I, I feel like this woman has had many an occasion to shout and Mm -hmm. she she has held back right as much as we joke about you know uh, the one time on reagan's birthday when she was like shouting on the phone you know uh and and it's like oh close your door lady you know sound travels right Mm -hmm. but like since the start of this movie like if if you were given a finite number of lose your shit coupons Mm -hmm. for you to play when things get tough and then if you went through the same movie as chris mcneil is Mm -hmm. going through right like all of mine would be gone. All of my lose your shit coupons would be gone. I don't know. Like, like, what do you think? Like, how? What would your count be? Mm, I think after after the first um, the first medical scene, I think was, mm-hmm. we're done. We did. You did everything you're supposed yeah. to see. Like, I, I lose my shit there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm I'm a much fussier actor than Chris McNeil, so I think uh, Burke. You know, making a joke about my legitimate question mm-hmm. on the set that would throw me off. I lose my shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so as much as like we have those scenes right where it's like. We're kind of showing Chris as like, you know, being a thinking actor. Some people who don't understand actors might think of it as like we're showing her as like being, oh, too fussy or too, you know, needy right. or whatever. But I would have lost my shit well before that and then well mm-hmm. after that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, Reagan pissing on the carpet. I wouldn't right. have had that nice that nice reaction that she has. I'd be, I'd be very pissed about that. Yeah. Reagan, honey, are you OK? Like, mm. no. Yeah. So, so all of I would have, s- I would have lost my shit to see that that this Jesuit dean has come into the party when, <laughs> when clearly he lives in Iraq, right? <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and where's the dark haired priest? Like, who's this? Who's this Irish guy? <laughs> Right, I threw a whole party to get the dean of antiquities. I just got that piano repaired. What are you doing? <laughs> Mark just repaired that piano. What are you touching exactly. the, the freaking things? Yeah, why are you touching the fucking the fucking um, strings with your hands, your dirty little hands? Oh. Get out of here. Yeah, exactly. I so think many in, reasons. In, yeah. in real life, I've I've probably lost my 
I probably lost my temper for real like three times. I can mm. think of, yeah, I think only three. And yeah, um, yeah, there's only a handful of times it's ever happened to me yeah. in my personal life. But mm-hmm. how yeah. about you, Lester? Do you lose your temper often? Do you lose your your um? What do you call them? The lose your shit coupons. My my lose lose my shit coupons. I would well. <laughs> In in my life, I kind of like I used to be like that when I was young. Yeah. When I was younger, um, now I just get like really quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I go and I work out or something. You just simmer. Oh, well, that's healthy. Okay, cool, cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. So you don't just let it stew and simmer. You go no, and do no, 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 no. That's right. nice. That's or, that's or I kind mature. of like I don't know, like like disconnect from the situation or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but see, that's the thing. Like, I can't disconnect if it's if it's like my child. Mm-hmm. I can't just be like, well, fuck these doctors. I'm gonna right. go. Uh, go to the gym. And it's like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> Reagan, you're on your own. I'm going to yeah. do some deadlifts. Like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the spa and get myself a caramel macchiato with yeah, extra right? caramel. You, I'll see you later, Reagan. <laughs> get your ish together. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So, I, like, again, this is this is perfectly designed to where, like, she she has no other choice but. But, you know, the choices that she's making. Right. Mm -hmm. And like all of this to say, folks, like talking about talking about anger, talking about losing your temper and everything like that. All of this to say that I think I think it's safe to say that both you and I, Keenan, would have run out of our lose your shit coupons long before. Completely. Yeah, completely. I think one of the things that might be going on here, you're talking about why, you know, she's she's losing her temper. It's going out in her her physical energy. And then she's mm -hmm. composing herself. She has to do it like five or six times within one one little paragraph that she's right right? um i think i think maybe part of it is like if she says the wrong thing you know she's she's this close right to saying we're done get out of here exactly but then she knows that's the wrong thing she knows that she still needs them Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um she can't just say get out of here and don't talk to my me and my (laughs) don't talk to me and my daughter ever again (laughs) right like she can't do that um she still needs them around yeah so she says that she says just the wrong thing right you're Mm -hmm. bald your glasses are stupid (laughs) right (laughs) Right. oh and by the way dr klein last time uh, i was in your office and and i was waiting for you i touched all your little toy cars (gasps) (laughs) that's right and i didn't even enjoy it (laughs) I was wondering where those fingerprints came from. They're not mine. I don't know. Oh. But yeah, like so. So all of that to say, I feel like Chris still has like a healthy stock of lose your shit coupons that mm-hmm. she has been she has been using very. Um, what's the word? The opposite of gen- generously, like, judiciously, I judiciously, very, right? Yeah. Yeah, so she is. She has been very careful with those, right? Mm-hmm. She is saving them up, right? <laughs> as as much as like the parodies like to paint her as this like distraught, mm-hmm. hysterical lady with like dark sunglasses and the mm-hmm. bloodshot eyes, right? She, like she isn't that, and I I think we only see that side of her because. Well, we're only invited to watch what is probably the worst part of her life. Right. Like that that moment you were talking about where um, where Reagan hears her mom freaking out on the phone. That's the only time it's happened, right? Right. That's, that's why that's a memory that, that Reagan remembers, right? Yes. A memory right. that Reagan remembers. Uh, you know, figure figure out a better way to say that in your own time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but you get right like this. That's right. seared into Reagan's idea of her mother because it was the one time it happened. Right. If, right. if she did that like every other day, then <laughs> – then Reagan wouldn't be like standing by the door being right. like traumatized, mm-hmm. right? She'd, she'd be, you know, she'd be playing with, you know, her little Snoopy doll or whatever, right? <laughs> She's like, I don't know, he's, ah, it's mom again. She's doing what she does, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that is that is a that is a, a moment that is rare. And we're tricked into think like, like be, just because it happens to be in the same movie within the same like hour mm-hmm. as her losing her shit here, it's it's like it, it it feels like it happens more often than it does. Right. Right. But like, yeah, she's she's not like this all the time. Like mm-hmm. her and Reagan like aren't at Disneyland like a year later. And the park attendant is like, I'm sorry, ma'am. We, like we got to cut off the line to see Mickey here. And she's like, oh, for Christ's sakes, what are you talking about? Can she see him or not? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> like like we're, we're not we're not seeing her now. I, like. We're seeing her now at her absolute lowest, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and in my opinion, right? Like, sh- she's holding it in pretty well, right? right? And I, and I think part of that is that she knows that if she lets too much of it out, like at once, it's gonna look a certain way. Right. Especially like in the 1970s, as a woman in front of these two men with white lab coats, like it's like, oh, okay, they don't have lab coats in this scene. <sighs> they they stand and talk like their coats are on, right? right. Like you you can hear their lab coats in how they talk, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> right. That's why, again, I like that, that they've left their um, their sports coats and their their winter coats in the room with Reagan because she has right. she has completely stripped them down. But, mm. but yeah, now they're back there and they have their their body uh, language is starting to come back. Right. right Imagine right. this giant desk, right? Like they're they're projecting mm-hmm. Freudian Freudianly <laughs> these mm-hmm. desks in front of them that you would just the other side of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so. Chris apologizes, right? And and for me, I think it's less to the doctors, maybe mm-hmm. even more to like herself or or actually to Reagan, right? Because because again, it's all for her and she doesn't want to jeopardize that, right? Mm-hmm. Now, this is when Dr. Tanny jumps in, right? Actually, actually, both men have changed the position of their hands, right? Dr. Dr. Klein is now leaning a little bit more on the banister, <laughs> and his other hand is is sort of like searching for his uh, back pocket. And Tanny has gone from hands on hips to arms crossed. And you know what they say about arms crossed as a body language, right? Oh, what, that you're sort of, you know, you're, you can't be moved. You're trying to def- be defensive. You're protecting yourself or... Right. Like, I, th- I think it's a couple of things, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I guess at one point, it like, it implied uh, authority and mm-hmm. control over the situation, but maybe, and maybe it still does, right? Maybe maybe that's what he thinks he's doing on mm-hmm. the outside, right? But, uh, you know, to, to some extent or, or from one perspective, like, that can be true, but we've also come to find that it also shows like insecurity mm-hmm. and defensiveness, right? Like an old acting teacher of mine like pointed out that like it's the covering of the vital organs, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're closing off your body in that way, right? Same same thing when like men stand with their hands, um, with their hands sort of like uh, clasped in front of them because mm-hmm. like because what's what's that covering, right? That's covering like the crotch area, right? <laughs> uh-huh. Like which is like a vulnerable part, like that that a wild animal or an attacker might might go after, right? But yeah, so there's that. But then also in popular culture, like arms crossed also seems to like give off this vibe of like, I'm not going to let anything in. You're not going to change my mind. Yeah, I'm right? thinking about that. He has a name. I'm sorry. I'm failing mm-hmm. as a Disney geek, but that that head guard in Aladdin. Oh, who's yes. Like, he's not right? a bad guy, right? He's just the guard of the of um, of the sultans, right? But he's, right. he's yes. always standing in front. He's like, street rat. And he yes. puts his hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, um, that doesn't seem... Um, insecure or anything right but i think you have to have that physique i think if you have my physique and you stand like that then yeah it's completely like i'm i'm a scared little boy <laughs> yeah that that's my trouble that's how i flirt at parties is that uh, scared little boy arms cross a bear of you so that's that's why um that, that's why i am where i am i suppose <laughs> and uh just for the disney folks razul razul of course our friend razul is the guard that we're talking about Absolutely. um and i believe he is a voice at, at like either either all the time or or at least some of the time he's voiced by jim cummings he's got most people are voiced by jim yeah. cummings <laughs> yeah nowadays alan tudyk is sort of the jim cummings of of the other half oh. of the Disney universe, he does everything else. Well, there we go. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, so uh, so now, like, I'm I'm reading this scene a little differently now, mm-hmm. um, because bef- like before, I saw Tanny as being like, "Now, now, ma'am, let's be reasonable here." Mm-hmm. Right? No, no, wait, let me let me do his voice right. <laughs> Now, now, ma'am, let's be reasonable here. But like, like with that air of authority, with that, with that calm assurance, right? Mm -hmm. But like now you can see it as like, he's just as lost as she is, right? But he's playing the doctor card, right? Like he's already given her his opinion, even though it was, it was, you know, Klein who spoke, Mm -hmm. right? And now he's closed off, right? So much so that you can see it in not just his arms, but those robot glasses are back, mm-hmm. right? The reflection is obscuring his eyes there a little. Um, not completely. We we see a little more of them, right? But those those glasses are doing their thing again, right? And now it's so much part of his character. It, it's like a visual trait. Like, like, you know how in cartoons they sometimes purposely design – characters without eyes you know characters well characters who have glasses i'm talking about right? oh yes like, yeah. but I'm, I'm not talking about sunglasses I'm, I'm talking about regular glasses they sometimes don't even draw the eyes behind them right like <laughs> like dr tanny would be like a far side character <laughs> or i'm thinking of whenever millhouse loses his glasses and he just has little tiny pupils so yeah the little <laughs> tiny people yeah when he has the glasses his eye his his um oh what the white what are the white parts of the eyes called his um, oh i would just say the whites of the eyes, the eyes. there is a word for it, yeah but there is. yeah the, the whites fill up his entire uh glasses glasses frames right and then they get knocked off or he's at the beach and he's looking for them and he's just little pupils and he's um petting that horseshoe crab and goes nice doggy (laughs) 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 ah we're 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 back with millhouse (laughs) that's my alter ego i mean that's who i am if you want to know me get to know millhouse (laughs) (laughs) now 
I, I know there's a different thing they do in anime, and mm-hmm. I guess I guess it's 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 leaked over into Western animation as well now. But like when a character with glasses who like normally you can see their eyes suddenly like the reflective surface is mm-hmm. uh, ob- obscuring them for like dramatic purposes. Usually it's like when they're like evil or something, right? Like, like they or they just got like this this evil idea. Or, and it has or like or a something. sound cue sometimes. It's kind of like a ching. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> So, but yeah, so Dr. Tanny would definitely, he would fit in the Far Side comics. He would, <laughs> he would fit as a, a Simpsons character. Absolutely. And he would, he would also fit in an anime. Right. right. Yeah. He's the secretly evil doctor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now here he says, there haven't been, let me, let me, let me try again. Yes. Now there haven't been more than a hundred cases of authentic so-called split personality, Miss McNeil. And again, I like how he refers to psychiatry as a temptation mm-hmm. almost like like if it, if it really is almost comparable like, as if it really is like almost comparable to magic or or religion. Right. Right. Although I have had some folks re- reach out since, uh, you know, the recording of our of our last uh, episodes when mm. we're talking, we're joking about like how the doctors are, are shitting all over psychiatry. Right. right? And they have defended uh, the doctors here, you know, talking about how it really could be like psychosomatic thing sure. like it it could it could be a lesion it could be a physical thing perhaps it, that's not as far fetched as i as i first thought but my question is why are we waiting on the psychiatrist right like that's the thing that bugs me like sure maybe it is physical right uh, I, I, I'm being Chris now not mm-hmm. Lester who knows it's a demon right mm-hmm. but like okay so Chris Chris I'm I'm sure is thinking sure it could be physical can't we run both kinds of tests at the same time? Mm-hmm. Like, Chris had dinner with the president. She's throwing parties with astronauts and senators, right? Like, with real these, astronauts. <laughs> with real astronauts, right? Even though they're not dressed like that. That right. was, you know, that was a bit of a, a, a an L, as the kids say. <laughs> they should have right? put yeah. that in the RSVP, right? They should put, yeah, they should. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, this guy, you know, Mr. Black, he, he came with his, you know, blacksmith's entry, right? <laughs> yeah, the priests are dressed like priests. What's wrong yeah? with you, What are you Mr. doing, astronaut? right? The snozberries dressed like snozberries? Like, <laughs> come on. You know, Reagan, honey, I'm really tired of this astronaut showing up without his astronaut clothes on. Why don't you, <laughs> don't you say something to him? Yeah. Okay, mom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like, yeah, but what I'm saying is like Chris – Chris has had like these, you know, lavish dinner parties. Right. She's had dinner with the president. She's mm-hmm. she's throwing like like parties with astronauts, right? Like are are these docs trying to save her money right. by not doing both <laughs> things at the same time? It's like, no, 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 no. We want you to save some money. So let's check out like all the physical stuff first and then you can, you know, go to the psychiatrist. What? She mm-hmm. has money enough to do both at the same time. Right. Like let her take the kid to a psychiatrist at the same time and save time, right? Mm-hmm. Like God knows if Reagan didn't have anything to talk to a therapist about before, she certainly has some stuff to share now after you've put her through hospital hell, mm-hmm. right? Like that's that's the thing that bugs me. The only reason I can see for, for them keeping her from examining all the options at the same time is ego. Like these guys just have to be right. Like – or, or folks, am I missing something here? Are there are there some kind of like union rules or something that that I'm not aware of that like you can't have a body doctor and a brain doctor working on you at the same time? <laughs> what's what's going on? Right. Well, I know I know there's some t- territoriality b- based on what kind of doctor you are, right? Like, mm. and, and some movies and TV shows have been about like Scrubs. The TV show was always about the surgeon see medicine as you go in and you do surgery, right? You mm-hmm. don't you know you don't cure things with um, with medication or you don't cure things with um, with physical therapy or even yeah. Uh, mental therapy, right? Like I'm right, a surgeon, right. everything, you know, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. When you're mm-hmm, a surgeon, mm-hmm. everything looks like an abscess and you go and you, <laughs> and you cut it out, right? Give easy peasy, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there is something to be said if we're going to take these doctors, um, um, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. There is something to be said about going into different types of, well, I guess what I'm talking about, I guess, is more like alternate medic- medicine, right? Like alternate right, medicine. Right. Like, Yes, um, you know, massage is shown to have great benefit. Acupuncture has been shown to have great benefit, right? Right. right. All these things have benefit, but um, but if you put all of your eggs in one basket there and you're not treating an underlying problem, then then you just let that medical problem, you know, get out of control. So correct, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. They they seem to be again. They seem to be treating psychiatry like one of these alternate uh, alternative medicines, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I, I, yeah, I, I still can't figure it out. And, and folks, like if anybody out there does have like an answer to this as to why 
she couldn't just do this, you know, both at the same time. I mean, like maybe uh, um, they're worried that the psychiatrist is going to say that there is no physical problem. Right. And then they wouldn't be able to – then Chris would say, well, you're not going to go in and fix this lesion that, that we know is there, but we just can't find it yet. Right? Yeah, that's the trouble. I mean, so like – um you know, I don't want to, uh, geez, I, I hesitate to go into specifics in case anyone's going through these things because, you know, mm-hmm. your individual choices, I, I understand why someone would, right. would, would, you know, be counter to medical science, but let's say like Steve Jobs, right? Like Steve yeah. Jobs had pancreatic cancer and he was trying mm-hmm. to treat it through alternative, alternative medicine. Right. And that's all well and good if he had been doing on, on top of that, his, you know, more proven medical, um, medical right. advice, right. Mm-hmm. Th- then he, he, that, you know, Again, without without getting his actual medical records, it's typically read again from the outside as mm-hmm. a preventable death, like a you know a sadly mm-hmm. preventable death, or at least it could have right. been, you know, we could have added years to his life, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like it it just it just keeps on screaming in my mind, like like do all of the things, right. just do mm-hmm. all of them, you know, like and hey, you know, also go to church and you know say a prayer, like why not? Like <laughs> yeah, give her some what? acupuncture, give her some reflexology, yeah. <laughs> chiropractic. <laughs> Maybe they're looking at like acupuncture is like, oh boy, those needles. Um, <laughs> it's like we already we we're already doing jobs with needles right now. So like, yeah, she's not going to be happy looking at needles right. again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly, again, I'm guessing going off a tangent. This isn't a medical uh, or a healthcare policy <laughs> show, right. I swear. But but like there there are. There are some therapies that we know to work in large in, – in most cases, right, like massage, acupuncture, et cetera, meditation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But they're just not scientifically measurable, right? Like how do you set up a double-blind study to test acupuncture? We mm-hmm, put in mm-hmm. fake needles <laughs> into you. Yeah. We put in needles like at random spots that we where we don't understand what we're doing. That doesn't sound safe, you know? Right, right. right so you just can't – you can't – we haven't figured out a way to test acupuncture what it's actually doing. So it might just be a placebo effect, but it's a mm-hmm. placebo effect that – seems to yeah, give like people placebo effects work yeah right? it gives people a sense of calm you know get a sense of wholeness etc and mm-hmm. i think like sort of they're brushing... gonna suggest a placebo effect in exorcism later oh, on. oh yeah right? exactly yeah like exactly exactly so we're gonna like um you know a lot of these things are um brushed aside with the same you know like oh all alternative medicine or all all fringe uh, therapies are the same and i think it like sets up this you know this tension between the general public and real medical science where, the, where mm-hmm, real medical mm-hmm. science does things like homeopathic medicine is completely disproven because you can mm-hmm. double, uh, double blind, uh, you know, test that and we can test the placebo effect and that's all that is. Right. right and that's right. actually really dangerous because we know mm-hmm. that it doesn't have any effect and people put their, their faith in it. So like right. to, to push some things aside completely, um, because they're just sort of labeled alternative. Like that's something that I've even heard, like, you know, medical doctors starting to come around to like, we have to be you know open to what has some, some uh, value to it and, and not to say like all of it has no value to it. Right, right. Right. Yeah. And all of this. So, so in any case, right, Chris is trying to come back down from her outburst, mm-hmm. right? She's taking deep breaths. Um, you know, maybe, maybe she's, you know, like practicing some, some meditation, meditation right there. Yeah. Right? Um, and she asks what's next. Dr. Tanny speaks to Klein now, another encephalogram pinned down that lesion. And yes, that'll involve another spinal, to which Chris exclaims again, oh, Christ. Right. right? I wish we had a tally of how many times she invokes <laughs> the name of Christ. This, yeah, like yeah. The, the one person in this, in this thing who doesn't believe in, in Christ, right? Uh, yeah, I wonder how many times I say it. I do say goddamn a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Yeah, I just sort of follow myself around with the tape sometime and <laughs> figure yeah, out how many right? times I say it. Yeah. If only, if only, Keenan, there were some kind of like record online of the two of us <laughs> talking. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, okay, so like, so they have to do another spinal, right? They have to do this encephalogram, right? And, and mm-hmm. we joked about this, right? Like in the last minute, we were like, hey, you want to do that all over again, right? Maybe we missed something, right? Like, <laughs> right. Now as that if it's you nothing, know how but... to do this, Reagan, now that yeah. you get a sense of what's going on, now you, maybe you could focus a little bit and say, okay, lesion, <laughs> yeah. become a little more visible here. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take the lesion to a therapist. That's what it is. <laughs> why now you, tell me, why, why, why are you in Reagan's brain? Why are you going to... You know. You're so closed off. You know, yeah. I, I'm just sensing from your body language that you don't want us to change you. You know, you know, they call you a, a scar, but I think I think you have some scars too. <laughs> oh God! But like, uh, so yeah, so uh, yeah, they got to do this. I can see, I can, see, I can see, like Dr. Tanny being like, hey, you know, the first one's always the hardest. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the second one is also hard. <laughs> right. But at some point, we burst your eardrums, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter anymore. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, the, yeah, little kid, you like that? The first taste's always free. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> And we're joking because it's it's so horrible. It's, it's so, so horrific, terrible. right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so, like they're, they're going to do that shit all over again. Mm-hmm. And, okay, so I think I, I talked about this already. But this movie, and I guess all successful movies, right, they fall victim to being so good and mm-hmm. so memorable that we remember them and we parody them and we usually boil them down to like very – uh, simple, digestible components, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like Bela Lugosi's Dracula is a lot more rich and complex than all of you know the spoofs that, like, than than like Adam Sandler's Dracula. Right, <laughs> right exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hannibal Lecter doesn't just like walk around making that weird mouth noise, right? And that's all he does. <laughs> and right? you know, I don't know if I've said this in the podcast, but there's this idea that that someone said somewhere before we had Blu-rays and, and DVDs where they uh-huh. said, you know, Hannibal Lecter never blinks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then, of course, right. you just look it up. Oh, he blinks all the time. He totally <laughs> blinks. You can see it, yeah. Right? Right. <laughs> That's been debunked, right? Debunked. Yeah. Silence of the Minutes, Minute of the Lambs. We got to, oh, God, if that's not on, we got to plant our flag in there. Yeah. <laughs> if that's if that's not already happening. Minute um, of the Lambs. Minute of the Lambs. Oh, yeah, he never says, hello, Clarice. No, he doesn't, right? right? There's only one conversation about lambs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it. There's only one. And Chianti. Right, you're right. And they're not even in the same thing. He doesn't drink Chianti in the entire movie. No, He's talking never. about a Chianti he had seven years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Put that in your movie pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, like, like, yeah. So, so he doesn't do he does he 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 doesn't act like the stereotypical right. Hannibal Lecter, right? right? Don Corleone doesn't say, "I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse." <laughs> at the conclusion of like every business deal, right? Right. The one my uh, our friend Cameron and I say all the time is is you came to me and the day of my daughter's wedding. Like, how many daughters do you have, Don Corleone? <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me do that clean. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. You came to me. On the day of my daughter's wedding. On the day of my daughter's wedding. (laughs) Right? You know, Luke Skywalker doesn't go, that's not true. That's impossible. Like at every bit of bad news he hears, right? (laughs) I'm sorry. We just had to tell Miss McNeil and Reagan, like, we got to cut the line. You can't see Mickey. That's not true. (laughs) Right. Sally Field. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's <doesn't> constantly say, <laughs> Daniel. The whole I've time, been, the whole time. I've been waiting in this line to see Mickey the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> right, it's a gross. And he takes off his. He, Mickey takes off his head, and it's and it's Daniel. <laughs> Oh, Yarna, if I'm if I'm guilty of anything, it's defrauding my friends and family because I love these kids. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I, I can't. They're, they're like air to me. They're like food to me. I can't. I, like like I just want to eat them up. It's like I can help you with that. <laughs> okay, but okay. So, so like what what I'm trying to say is like these moments are so impactful to us as individuals and to us as like a society, uh, uh, like a culture, right. that we, we remember them. And, and they are often the first things that we go to when we like abbreviate the movie for mm-hmm. like for comedic purposes or for any other purpose, right? right? Just to highlight the best moments. And so I feel like this movie suffers from a false memory of Chris McNeil being like super emotional and reactionary all the time mm-hmm. when that's not the case at all. As, as if she's going to come down to breakfast one day and Willie's going to be like, you know, madam, I have burns of toast. And she's going to be like, oh, my God. <laughs> and, and Carl comes in and he's, he's uh, she's like, you know, Carl, we've got rats, rats in the attic. And Carl is like, there are no rats. And she just explodes like, Jesus Christ, won't somebody help me? <laughs> like, right? Like, like she's just like always like that, right? right? Like, but actually, it's it's the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. If she was always like that, the story wouldn't be special. Like, I remember Keenan, you said a thing a long time ago that stuck with me. Uh, uh, what was it? Like, the sun rises and sets every day. Mm. You make your movie about the day that doesn't happen. Right? Exactly that that moment that we were just talking about, where Reagan saw her mom lose her shit in the phone. That's because mm-hmm. she never sees it. Right. Precisely. So. We are seeing Chris at her lowest point. We are seeing her at her most vulnerable, right? Like we're seeing her 
in a time when her metal is being tested, right? Much like we're seeing all of the characters here, right? This is their crucible, right? Mm -hmm. um, in fact, later <laughs> we have a character remark that perhaps evil is the crucible of good, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I'm not saying that these doctors are evil. Right. I'm, I'm just saying like contrary to the parodies and the sort of like misremembered characterizations, we're seeing – strength from Chris here, not weakness. Right. I want to point out this interesting visual thing that we're doing. It's very subtle. So as mm. as Dr. Tanny is talking about, okay, we've got to go in and we've got to like sort of um, re-up and make this plan after after Chris has, you know, um, started to have her hysterical, emotional, unreasonable, motherly. Right, right. <laughs> right. Um, the camera starts to push in very, very, very slowly on both Tanny and, and Chris's coverage. <sighs> Yes, it's incredibly mm -hmm. subtle. Um, maybe you wouldn't even notice it if you were watching it for the first time. I think because we're watching mm -hmm. it over and over again, and yes. um, yeah, it, it, it's very interesting. Like it seems to suggest that that Tanny is winning her over, right? Like Tanny mm. is is gradually sort of like, okay, I'm I'm going to take us back to where we need to go. Not that Chris has to accept it, but at least he's sort of entertaining that idea. Yeah, interesting. I never even thought of that. Like, so so you're saying that like when the camera does that, like very very subtle, like like you you can't notice it unless you're unless you're looking for it like when it's subtle like very subtly like gets closer to yeah, it's a character pushing in, right is that us as the audience like being won over by them uh, sometimes right everything's contextual right so what could it be here it, you know we're getting closer to them we're, we're empathizing with them more we're listening mm. to them more they're becoming stronger but here i think it's interesting that it's matched so it's happening on dr tanny's side and it's happening on chris's side mm. um in a way that it's not happening in a shot of all three of them um right yeah so i think i think you know why would we why would we do things that are sort of matching and making them, you know, on the same page, even in an argument scene? Because the, the right. scene isn't over yet. Um, I'm just trying to think about why we might do that. And that's what I yeah. have. No, no right answers or wrong answers. But hmm. it sort of makes them seem like they're really talking to each other at the very least, as opposed to just throwing out ideas and neither of them is listening. Right, right. Oh, interesting. That's really that's really cool. Thank you, Keenan. Um, so yeah, folks, that's that's all the minute, uh, all the all the notes I got for this minute. Was there anything else that we wanted to that we wanted to touch on in this minute? No, I think we got it. All right. So, Keenan, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think I am, Lester. Folks, until next time, the, the power, power of Rum Tum, Tum Tugger compels you. There we go. Okay, we got it. <laughs>